Hello, everybody. My name is Genevieve Milliken, and I'm the Data Services Librarian at the NYU Health Sciences Library. And in this video series, we're going to be going over surveys in REDCap. So just as a quick agenda, I will be providing a quick recap of what REDCap is, and then we'll move over to REDCap, and I will go over how to enable instruments as surveys, as well as creating email lists and distributing the survey. And I will also show you some of the automated features that you can apply to surveys. So just as a quick recap, REDCap can be used to create data collection instruments as well as surveys. In our first series of videos titled Getting Started with REDCap, I showed you how to create a data collection instrument using that online designer. And today we're gonna to take that a little bit further and I'll show you how to enable those instruments as surveys and to distribute them out to your participants. Um, REDCap is entirely web-based, which is very convenient. It is also HIPAA compliant and MCIT supported, which means it's backed up and stored by MCIT, um, who keeps a log of any changes that were made to questions or any record while that project is in production mode. And all of this really contributes to its compliance as it relates to protected health information. I should mention that at Langone, we have two instances of REDCap. We have internal REDCap and open REDCap. Um, these are functionally the same, but the biggest difference is that internal REDCap requires you to be within the firewall or otherwise on the VPN, and this includes your participants. So when we're thinking about surveys that we're gonna be distributing out to people via emails, they're probably gonna be filling them out in their house, outside of our institution, um, you probably want to use Open REDCap, and that is what I'm going to be demonstrating today. So REDCap does have some additional quality data quality features, um, includes ways to validate your responses, and all of this really does contribute to cutting down on inconsistencies within your data. And we saw this during our first video series where we're adding some validation um, to our fields, and some of the validations you can add include things like minimum and maximum values, setting a specific date format, or even adding an ontology for medical terms and diagnoses. So within REDCap, there is a section to run reports, but it is likely at some point we're going to want to export our data um, and do some data analysis outside of the platform. And you can pull your data out of REDCap into something like SPSS or R, or really the data analysis tool of your choice. So that's just a quick recap of what REDCap is. Now I'm going to jump over to open REDCap and get started with our demonstration. Okay, so I've now navigated to openredcap.nyumc.org, and this is gonna be our instance of Open Redcap, and I'm gonna log in with my Kerberos ID and associated password. I'm gonna go ahead and log in and do that two-step verification process. All right, so now I'm logged in. I can see all of my projects. I like to use the folder organization, um, which you can add folders if you like, um, or you can just organize your, your sort of um, project level at any way that you want. Um, but for today, we're gonna go ahead and start a new project. So at the header, there's a plus sign, so we're gonna click new project. All right, I'm just gonna name it demo-surveys. And today we're just practicing, so I'm going to go ahead and choose practice just for fun. If you were doing research, you would add a few more details about your project. I'm going to assign it to a project folder, send it to my workshops, um, and then I'm going to choose empty project blank slate, and this is going to be the default. I'm going to go ahead and create that project. All right, so this is the landing page for our projects, our demos-surveys project. Um, and instead of building a form from scratch, which I went over in the getting started videos, um, we're actually going to use two existing forms from the REDCap shared library. And I can access the REDCap shared library. So I'm on the project setup tab. We have this first section, and then we have the second section, and we have explore the REDCap instrument library. So I'm going to go ahead and click into that. And the REDCap Shared Library is a repository for REDCap data collection instruments and forms that can be downloaded and used by researchers at REDCap partner institutions. These are curated instruments um, with a red star, and they have been approved for inclusion by the REDCap Library Oversight Committee, also known as REDLOC. So these curated instruments have been approved for inclusion um, because they've been reviewed for research relevance, accuracy, and function encoding, as well as copyright issues. 
Other instruments without a star are shared by individuals or groups from consortium institutions, and these can be used as an as-is basis. So for today, I'm going to add one from the Red Cap Shared Library into my project. I'm going to choose this first one for testing and demonstration purposes only, dash nacho craving index survey. So this is a really great practice instrument that you can add to your project. And if I click the drop down, I get a, a little bit more information, and then I'm going to click import into my Red Cap project. We do have a shared content agreement. This is basically the fine print of reuse for this uh, particular data collection instrument. When you are you know, doing research, you definitely want to read that fine print. And you do have the option to change the name. I'm going to go ahead and remove this front portion and just name it Nacho Craving Index so it's a little bit clearer. And go ahead and click Add. And then I'm going to click Return to Previous Page. And this will bring me to all of my instruments. And remember that REDCap does have that default empty form to get you started on um, that Form 1. I don't need that today. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Yes, delete. OK, so now I have a, a single um, form. I am actually want a second one for today's purposes. I will show you some of a little bit of the advanced features when it comes to automation. So we are going to use a second one today. So I'm going to return to the, in, the Red Captured library and import a second form. I want a demographics form. So I'm going to go ahead and search for demographics. We can see we have um, 49 results for demographics. I think you actually have a little bit more when you put in um, demographics, so plural. Um, but the one I'm looking for is on page three. It is this C version 1.1 demographics form. We can see we have that star, and it has been downloaded over 2,500 times. So if I click into it, I have some more information. I'm going to click import into my project. And as I mentioned, we do have that content agreement that you're going to want to read and agree to the terms of use. I'm going to go ahead and import it into my project and return to previous page. And this is where I'm going to be able to see all of my data collection instruments. So we're on the online designer, and that will show you your, your list of instruments. You can also find it on this left-hand side right here. OK, so now I have my two instruments. Um, these are just forms. I can't necessarily email them out at this point. Um, that's because I need to turn on um, surveys within this project. So if I go to the project setup page, um, this first section, the main project settings, this first option says use surveys in this project. We know it's not enabled because it's currently in red. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on and enable it. We can see it has turned green. We have also have some a new option on this left-hand side under data collection. We have survey distributions tools. And that was available because we turned on surveys. So using surveys in a project is a bit of a two-step process. The first thing we need to do is enable it in the main project settings, which basically is a global um, setting that you can use. you can use surveys in your project. We do have to do a step two, which means that I have to go to the particular form that I want to be enabled as a survey. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and choose this first one, Not Your Craving Index Survey. I'm going to go ahead and, and enable it as a survey. All right, so this now takes me to the, the set up my survey page um, where we can sort of refine the look and feel of the survey itself. And I'll be going, going over all of the particulars on the survey setup in our next video.